And on behalf of all of us in Comexi, we thank you very much for being here with us today. The floor is all yours, Alan. We in the United States have literally never seen anything like this. Uh, this is the first time in our history that we elected someone as president who has absolutely zero background in either politics or in um, the military. Donald Trump is, for better and for worse, uh, unique. And, and that, I think, is the first point. Many, many people, including many of my friends in Mexico, are assuming because of that, he will therefore fail. Because he doesn't know anything about the job, therefore, uh, he, and indeed many of his cabinet, about their jobs, therefore they will fail. I think that's an enormous, it may prove to be true, but it's an enormous mistake. I think the important point is you need to think of, of both Donald Trump, but also his administration, uh, as fundamentally a mercantilist government. It feels like Britain uh, of the 18th or 19th century. It's not a 20th or 21st century kind of government, at least in my judgment. They are certainly not ideological. They are amateurs. They are proud amateurs. This is a DIY government. Do it yourself. Uh, he was elected to challenge and to change the status quo, and that's what he's going to do. He may fail in the process, but he is going to blow up anything that looks like the status quo just because it is the status quo. In terms of philosophy, uh, this is good old-fashioned republicanism. Cut taxes, cut regulations, but interestingly, strong net exports uh, create jobs, which is the mercantilist part of the equation. Uh, there is a mistake being made at the moment saying, oh, this is just like Reagan, we're going to have big tax cuts, and hence the markets will boom. Um, the answer to that is maybe. Um, I'm not a very good stock picker. Um, but what I do know is that the world today is fundamentally different in economic terms than it was in the 80s. We have a fully valued stock market. We have full employment. We live in a world of rising protection. Um, it really is a different uh, stage on which Donald Trump and his policies will perform than it was with Ronald Reagan, uh, and there's a couple reasons for that. One, we are in uncharted waters. Uh, by any way you look at the data, the blue line is debt to, to GDP, the red is uh, growth. The U.S. economy has been slowing and on a slowing trajectory for some time, and we have been uh, borrowing like there is no tomorrow. Now, of course, with very low interest rates the last couple of years, that made a lot of sense. But we have become a highly indebted nation and a very slow growing nation. Um, he is going to continue to challenge the status quo. He will tweet. Uh, he will attack NATO. He will take phone calls from Taiwan. He will look for very cheap wins, uh, trying to persuade, as he did yesterday at breakfast and again today, trying to persuade businessmen that business women, that they need to rearrange their investment plans, rearrange their hiring plans. Uh, he intends to, a la Teddy Roosevelt, carry a very big stick and to whack people aside the head with it, and he's going to do it every day. He has promised that he will appoint, nominate a Supreme Court judge. That is going to be enormously controversial. Um, it will bring the kinds of people that were in the streets around the world last Saturday uh, back into the streets because the odds that this is a conservative white male are pretty high. We'll see. Shouldn't prejudge. Uh, but nonetheless, we certainly don't expect a liberal uh, who's going to endorse uh, abortion and other liberal causes. Uh, he will work with the Congress, and I'll come back to the politics of this in a second, on radical tax reform. This is almost certainly one of the highest priorities of the Republicans in Washington, that is to say, in the Senate and the House, uh, it coincides with something the president would like to do. It is going to suck most of the political energy out of Washington. It is likely to leave very little uh, space to do much else. And from that point of view, it's important. It's extremely important as you think about what's he going to do with Mexico. I think if you are a Mexican exporter, if you are a, a differently, if you are a company that works on both sides of the border, but suddenly is being told, oh, your imports are not a deductible expense from your corporate tax base in the United States, you've got a problem. You will presumably uh, have to change your pricing structure or find new sources for those imports. It has a huge potential impact on Mexico because, of course, Mexico is the United States' uh, largest uh, trading partner. Now, what about Mexico? 
Um, we know that there will be, and it was confirmed again yesterday, there will eventually be formal notice to renegotiate. Uh, that's already a fait accompli because both President Pena and, and Prime Minister Trudeau have said, hey, we want to renegotiate. They, they, they see a train when it's coming at them. Uh, the renegotiation, however, is based on a, from our point of view, would be based on a fundamentally different assign, assessment, different, different uh, basis than the original negotiation 25 years ago. Two decades ago, we were trying to create something new together that would benefit everyone. The renegotiation from the point of view of the incoming administration is, is exactly not that. It is about getting a better deal for the United States, uh, that, whom they perceive to be disadvantaged uh, by NAFTA as it now exists, uh, not as much on the tariff side as on the non-tariff side and on the side of excluded sectors. Uh, obviously, the TPP commitments that Mexico already made will be the point of departure. Um, from a negotiating point of view, you already know what Mexico is willing to give. You already know what Mexico reserved, so you have that defined. Um, the problem, of course, is that from the U.S. point of view, that's a trade negotiation. President Pena yesterday, I think, correctly asked for something much broader than that. Uh, from Mexico's point of view, obviously, you would like this to be a broad, all-encompassing negotiation, including border security, including the wall, including immigration, including deportations, um, et cetera, et cetera. Not at all clear that the incoming administration sees it that way. In fact, my gut instinct tells me they don't. All of that said, you've got to remember that the president still has his cell phone. Um, he will continue to use that cell phone to tweet. So individual companies are going to be uh, assaulted. Uh, individual acts will be highlighted, good, bad, and ugly. Uh, the president is not going to suddenly become someone other than he is, and that will certainly apply to this negotiation. He said, we the people, me and my people that elected me, are going to govern. And if you don't like it, you're going to have to deal with them. Uh, and, and that is clearly, for better and for worse, how he sees the world. There are three potential mistakes that you can make. First, many are assuming, and I am sure they are wrong, that Washington will change him, that the awe and majesty of that Oval Office, of the power that comes with that office, will somehow reshape him into something other than he has been. I, I, I would be very surprised if that happens. Um, secondly, the assumption that what you think of as the checks and balances will in fact check and balance. Uh, again, that would surprise me. We have, we the United States, have created a very powerful office over the last 40 years. Uh, the presidency has too few, in my judgment, checks and balances. Uh, don't expect them suddenly to re reappear. And finally, the third assumption that people are making, and I think is wrong, is that he's going to leave governing to his cabinet uh, and to the staff. Um, yep, he wants to be the chairman, but this is a chairman who on some days will go down and check if the boiler's working. Um, on other days, will just chair the board meeting. Uh, he's going to be a very activist, interventionist, uh, dynamic, uh, for better or for worse, uh, president. Um, and, and I guess all of that adds up to my, I don't think it's the end of the world. I think Spiegel is wrong, uh, but it is the end of Mariana, as you said at the start, it is certainly the end of an era and start of something new.